You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. Baptism of the Lord, 9th of January, Sunday Reflection. My dear friends, so we will begin ordinary time. After, the, after Christmas, now we begin the ordinary time. And it's a new journey. New journey with the Lord. How Jesus started the public ministry. So he was in silent, he was silent in Nazareth for 30 years. And now he's coming out of, out of his own, own, own secured land for a mission. And how he started the mission, it's important. The first reading beautifully speaks about the preparation for the Messiah to come. The word of God says, voice cries in the wilderness. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. So the preparation, we find that preparation with the voice in the wilderness, John the Baptist. My dear friends, so if you want to experience the Lord, there has to be a place for preparation. You have to prepare yourself to receive the anointing of the Lord. John is said, that's why the John is saying, I baptize you with water, but then the one who is coming, my dear, whoever, John, John said, answered them all saying, I baptize you with water, but he who is coming, who is mightier than is coming. The strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with, war, with fire and Holy Spirit. So that when he baptizes you with the, with the fire and the Holy Spirit, you are completely transformed. That is the promise. That's the difference between promise and preparation. John is saying, I am not, not worthy to untie the sandals. So he is he so great. That baptism is completely a, a different baptism from the baptism of John the Baptist. Of course, baptism, the word baptism comes from the Greek word baptisa. And where it means dip, immerse. So symbolically, it shows that person is dead and rose again. And he will have a new life. And that, that is the exact meaning of baptism. The baptism that you and I have received is a different baptism from John, John's baptism in River Jordan. So it's a John was baptizing in River Jordan. It goes to, it has a connection to Exodus. When people of Israel were, were moving towards the promised land, Joshua was there in the same place, in the same river, River Jordan. And they were crossing towards we crossing the river Jordan to the promised land. And now Jesus is here at the river Jordan. Taking people a complete, complete new promised land. Salve, land of salvation. My dear friends. So we are called to cross over with baptism. A new life. This is exactly where, so, but then we have to understand the baptism, the sacrament of baptism. The biblical base for that sacrament is not the baptism of John the Baptist, my dear friends. It's a completely, completely different thing. But then, rather, the Lord is going to save you. He has come to save you. Save you from bondage. So prepare the way because the Lord is coming. Behold our God. Behold the Lord. Lord God coming comes with might and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. The Lord is coming like a shepherd to take care of you, to protect you. So in baptism, you are so much connected to him. My dear friends, in, in Psalm number 2, we find how a king is baptized, how his king is, king is baptized, anointed. The moment a king is anointed, he is considered as an adopted son of God. So normally, olden days, the kings are considered as gods, deities. But then in Israel, they we have only one God. So king is anointed and he becomes an adopted son. 
So in baptism, we find the same scenario. How we become adopted children of God with the blood of Jesus. That shepherd has come to save us. So it, he has saved us not with water but with blood. That shepherd became a sheep and he was killed, paid the ransom for us, my dear friends. So that's exactly how you and I were connected, so much connected to the body of Christ. We are, we are all parts. You read 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and see how we all become parts. And the mystical body of Jesus, he becomes the head. So we baptize, with baptism, we all get connected to him with a mission, with a calling. When you're baptized, you're, con you're connected to the body of Jesus body of that mystical Jesus and now you have a calling the Lord is when the Lord is going to Beth, 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 going to Jordan Jordan and he's kneeling before John the Baptist imagine this move my dear friends John the Baptist is a cousin of him yet he's the one who prepares the way here 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 is Messiah and Messiah is kneeling before John the one who came to prepare the way. My dear friends, what a, what a gesture of humanity. When he was kneeling, heavens were opening. If you want to serve the Lord, humility is one basic thing that you should have. With pride, God cannot work with you. God cannot handle you. God cannot use you. Your stubbornness, has to, your ego has to be crushed, my dear friends. So exactly that's why the Lord is kneeling before John. And he, went, so, and he was praying, my dear friends. Praying before a mission. Because you need power from above to accomplish the mission of God. Without which, yeah, nobody, if, the, if the branch is not connected to the vine, it will never bear fruit. So prayer will, take, will bring you back to that connection. And then, my dear friends, he was... He was kneeling and heavens were opening and the voice of God came with the Holy Spirit. In baptism, you will get the connection of the Holy Spirit. You are baptized with the Holy Spirit. So we'll get connection like the veins, like the nerves in your cyst body. So all the, all the parts were connected with the nerves and the signal was brought, the head, signal of the head was communicated through the veins, through the nerves. So that's how the Holy Spirit works in you. We become parts of the body. And then the Lord, the Lord is saying that, that, that we have a mission. So he, he is Jesus and he, he is kneeling and he hear, heard the voice from heaven. So Holy Spirit is that nerve which connects you to the voice of God. And he was said, you are my beloved son. I'm very pleased of you. My dear friends, the gospel, gospels, we have three places in, in, in Tabor, in Transfiguration, God spoke. And in baptism, God spoke. Even in John chapter 12, verse 28, Father spoke and said, you are my beloved son. And this beloved son is a connect, is always, his son is connected to Psalm number two. And the beloved is connected to Isaiah. Suffering servant of Isaiah. So the, in this sonship, he was called to suffer. Suffer to save you and me. So in your baptism also, in your baptism, in your, it's a calling to connect yourself to the head, Jesus, and suffer with him. We have a mission to accomplish. We have a mission to accomplish. And Jesus, in the beginning, at the very outset of that mission, Jesus heard the voice of the Father saying that I'm, I'm, I'm happy about you, I love you, I love you. And that voice gave him that boost, buck up, enthusiasm. So let's go to him in deep prayer, connect yourself to the Holy Spirit. Let you also, let us also hear the voice from heaven that we are the beloved ones and that will give you strength and boost to do the mission till the end, my dear friends. Amen. May God bless you.